this is my list for the top 10 greatest MMA fighters of all time. Um, this is usually a very controversial list that people make. Everyone disagrees almost all the time, so you're very likely to disagree with something here. But this is just my personal opinion based on like record, title defences, and who they've lost to. Starting off at um, number 10, I'm going to go with Dominic Cruz. Dominic Cruz is arguably the best bantamweight of all time. Um, his record's 24 and 4, which isn't terrible as a record, but it's not great. He's managed to get three title defences, which honestly is good. Like nowadays, how often do you see people getting three title defences? Like we've got Sterling, Volkanovski. Um, that, that's it right now. I know Peter, like John Jones has got defences, but not as of right now. But yeah, we've got two champions with three title defences. So three title defences is good. And for between 2018 and 2016, he went on a 12 fight win streak. He is definitely, arguably, the, if not the best bantamweight of all time. So I think he deserves a number 10 spot in this. Beating a lot of good people, also lost to a lot of good people. Nothing extremely special. He's just scraped a number 10. But you have to recognise Dominic Cruz, and we have to put him on the list. If Dominic Cruz isn't on the list, then it's back, quite a bad list, isn't it? Then this next one's going to be even more controversial. I think no one really is going to agree with this, but I'm actually going to go with Israel Adesanya. He's 24-2, and two, which is a good record. The only two people he's ever lost to is Alex Pereira and Jan Blachowicz. Jan Blachowicz was a light heavyweight, and Pereira was basically a light heavyweight who just blended into middleweight. He's also beaten Alex Pereira as well, so one of the people he's lost to is beaten, and he's managed to get five title defences. He's defended it against Whitaker, Cannonier. Vittori, um, Costa, um, I forgot who the other one was. Uh, Sil was it? Sil no, it weren't Silver. I forgot. I forgot his defenses, but um, but yeah, he, he's only ever lost to Pereira and Yan. Um, those are two. You know, Pereira. I mean, Pereira had already beaten him a couple times before. Yan was huge. I don't think Adesanya was ready for um, per um what's his name, Blahovich at that time. Um, and yeah, five title defences and he's just got a knockout win as well he's going to be defending against Drikas Duplassi very soon um, which I actually don't think he wins that fight I'll do a breakdown on it in the future um, oh yeah he also defended against Yoel Romero as well I forgot he defended against Ro uh, Yo Yoel Romero but yeah I'm going to put Adesanya at number 9 you're probably going to disagree but I think I think he's very underrated 24-2 and two, 5 title defences and if he beats Drikas 2 plus E that'll make it 6 and he's only ever lost twice um, yeah Adesanya number 9 coming in at number 8 I'm going to go with Daniel Cormier his record's 22-3 and three, which isn't the best record but when you look at who he's lost to he's only ever lost to John Jones and Stipe Miocic and he's beaten Stipe one out of the three times that they fought and one of the John Jones losses were actually a no contest so he's only ever lost to Jones once um, he dominated at heavyweight before he fought those guys even when he had the first fight with Stipe he was a dominant at heavyweight and light heavyweight four title defences he's been a champ he's been double champ as well he's been one of the few double champs in the UFC so he's managed to hold not only one like most fighters can't even hold, hold one belt never mind two at the same time he's been double champ four title defences 22 and 3 he was a killer back in the day man he's wrestling so good he's, all, he's one of the best wrestlers in the UFC deserves everything he's got obviously if he'd have beaten Jones and Stipe I probably would have been up there in like the top five but he could never kept never get past Jones and Stipe was just too good for him but Stipe is like the heavyweight goat in it although he isn't even on this list though but yeah double champ 22 and 3 four title defences all american wrestler smashes people's head in um yeah Daniel Cormier deserves recognition if he's not on your top 10 goat list yeah he's definitely that arguably the second best heavyweight or second best light heavyweight of all time um he dominated those two divisions until Jones and Stipe came around so yeah, you got to give it to Daniel Cormier. Coming in at number 7, I'm going to go with Jose Aldo. Most people, like casual fans, only really remember Aldo for the Conor McGregor incident. Um, but he's actually he's a great fighter. 31-8, and eight, most of the losses are coming in his recent career. Um, seven title defences is gr great. I think he's... I mean, people still think he's the best featherweight of all time. Um, but seven title defences is just amazing. I mean, defending it seven times. 15 fight win streak from 2008 to 2014. So, in the span of six years, he's had 15 win, 15 fights, and won all of them. 
seven title defences he was so dominant back in the day man before the McGregor era and even after the McGregor era beating people like Marlon Vera and Rob Fon and only really ever lost his most recent fight he only lost to Marab and Marab could barely beat him he had to hold him against a cage but seven title defences this guy was so dominant back in the day was it featherweight you know he had some of the slickest striking ever he had cardio like a madman he could grapple he could do everything he could submit you no one could stop Aldo besides McGregor no one could stop Aldo, and then he, he's just been he's been a, he's been a fighter for so long. He's been in the UFC. I know he's retired now, but he's been in the UFC for so long, and he's always just been very consistently winning. Like a lot of fighters, they'll they'll go on a winning streak, then go on a massive losing streak. Aldo's never really done that. He's kind of won a couple, maybe lost one, won a couple more, maybe lost one or two. He's he's not been consistently just getting win streaks, but he's not been on a losing streak. One of the best featherweights of all time, if not the best featherweight of all time. Yeah, it's hard to beat seven title defences, but there are people who have beaten seven title defences. Talking of best featherweight of all time, I'm going to go with Volkanovski. I think he's the best featherweight of all time after after Saturday. 26-2, which is an amazing record. One of them was Islam Makachev, which people say was a controversial fight. And the other was this loss ages ago. I don't even think it was in featherweight. It was like welterweight or something. Um, he's got six title defences currently, but he's also counting if he beats Ilya Tupuria at featherweight he'll move it up to seven and be tied with Aldo he destroys every opponent look at the past couple of opponents after fighting Falk Islam's face Yaya's face Ortega's face Holloway's face Korean Zombie's face he, he mutilates he doesn't just he's not like one of those people who barely beat you and then he'll just pin you on the floor he will ruin your face most people can't fight for a couple of months after fighting Volkanovski because he do, he does that much damage to you. He's so good, man. He's so good, is Volkanovski. Very, very well-rounded. I think he might actually be the most well-rounded person currently in the UFC. Still active. So this is only... He's managed to become a top six of all time and his career's not even over yet. I still think he's got to go out there and beat Ilya Tuporia. He can also have that rematch with uh, Islam Makachev. And if he does that and wins them both, that's only going to make him go even even higher into the GOAT list. But yeah, I'm going to put Volkanovski number six. Very, very impressive record. A lot of title defences and he's still getting more. Destroys every opponent. Very well-rounded. I mean, did you see him on Saturday night against Yaya Rodriguez? People were saying this would be his toughest test. Yaya's got good BJJ. Yaya's got some of the best striking in the, in the featherweight division. Volkanovski outstruck him and outgrappled him. He, he just destroyed him. He's so well-rounded. Such a good champion. Number six, best of all time. He's accomplished so much and his career's not even over. Number five, every casual fan's goat, Khabib. Most people are going to be wondering why I've put Khabib on here. 29, is, 29 and 0. 29 wins, never lost a fight in his life. He's had three title defences, which, to be honest, to say you're in the top five goat list isn't impressive. It would have been good if he stayed around a little longer and got a couple more defences, but three's enough. One of the best wrestlers in UFC history. He was such a good grappler. Him and Islam and all the Dagestanis, he's such a good wrestler. He made the staple for, like, Dagestanis. Before Khabib, there weren't really that much Dagestanis in the UFC. He's, like, influenced them all with his wrestling. The way he took down and dominated McGregor, Gaethje... Poirier, Ally Quinta, he even was that guy, who's it, that he, he managed to like slam like 26 times in a single fight, and you notice about Khabib, after every fight, he never takes any damage, I don't think he's ever bled in the octagon, he never takes damage after any fight, and I can guarantee if he fought Volkanovski he would, but yeah, never takes any damage, and the thing is, what made him scary, everyone knew what he was going to do, he was going to take you down, wear you out, and have a ground and pound finish you or submit you, and no one could do anything to stop him, no one could do anything to stop him, Poirier knew that was going to happen, Gaethje knew that was going to happen, McGregor knew that was going to happen, none of them could stop it, 29 and all, like I said, it would have been good if he had a little bit more title defences, but solid, solid fighter, top five greatest of all time, I think he's got probably the cleanest record in MMA, um. yeah top 5 Khabib I think we all know why coming at number 4 I'm going to go with An Anderson Silva Anderson Silva at number 4 he is one of the best strikers in the UFC he had such slick striking back in the day did I 2006 to 2007 I got that wrong it wasn't 2006 to 2007 I think it was like 2012 hold on I don't know why it says 2007, not 2017. 
2012, I think it was. Might be wrong there. Um, legendary striker though, 16 fight win streak from 2006 to I think it was 2012. So that's a huge win streak. That's a lot of people's records to get 16 fights and he's just got that in a win streak his run back in the day was unstoppable nobody could stop him he would just knock everyone out no one could catch him no one could grapple him besides Shale Sonnen 10 title defences 10 that's an insane amount some people say it was 11 but obviously the whole PED thing happened but 10 title defences how many fighters have 10 title defences title defences most can't even get one or two and he's got 10 he was unstoppable back in the day. Towards the end of his career, he did go on a bit of a downfall, losing to people like Adesanya, Kananiya, but... 10 title defences, 34 and 11, isn't the best record of all time, but, I mean, 34 wins is an impressive amount. He had such a long career as well, running from, like, early 2000s up until, like... When did he retire? Was it 2020? against Kananiya, or was it Uriah Hall? I think it was Uriah Hall, but such a good record, such a good career, such a good winning streak. It's a shame he went and fought Jake Paul afterwards, but hey, it was always a good record. Then we're going to go on to number three. I'm going to go with Demetrius Johnson. 25-4 and four is a record, 11 title defences, I spelled that wrong, but who cares. And he's still winning today in 1FC. He's one of the most underappreciated, underrated fighters of all time. He's fighting on fight nights. Like, there's a fight night coming up. I think it's Shevchenko versus Grasso 2. That's a fight night. He's got, this guy used to be on fight nights. 25-4. and four, Very, very impressive record. 11 title defences. 11. There's me going on. 11 title defences. Not only has he won the belt, he's defended it 11 times. That's insane. That's actually, that's insane. 11 title defences. That's so impressive. And he's still winning today. Like I said before, a lot of fighters tend to win, and then they'll go on a bit of a losing streak. But this guy's not, he's still winning today in um, 1FC. That fight with Rod Tang, where he, he, he could survive the tie box and then put him to sleep. So underappreciated. So <laughs> underrated. 11 title defences man this guy dominated the flyweight division when this guy's about nobody's winning in flyweight no one's winning in flyweight beat people like Zahudo he had the rematch with John Dodson he's still winning against that Adrian guy whatever his name is in 1FC he's such a good fighter greatest flyweight of all time by far no one could beat like whenever Demetrius Johnson was in flyweight it was kind of like who's going to be the number one contender because everyone knew that you're not beating him he was so good, so underappreciated, third best of all time. The second best of all time, I'm going to give it to George St. Pierre. 26 and 2 as a record, insane, 126 times, only ever lost twice. And the two people that he lost to, he ended up beating in the future. So nobody's managed to beat him and just leave it on their record. Everyone that he's lost to, everyone that he's lost to, he's uh, managed to beat again in the in the future. Nine title defences is extremely impressive. And he was also a champion in two weight classes. Yeah, dominated the welterweight. Was it the welterweight or was it middleweight? Yeah, dominated the welterweight division on his run. Beat both people he lost to. Very well-rounded as well. Had really good striking, really good wrestling, really, really good BJJ. Had nine title defences. Then after his retirement, he gets a little bit bored, decides to come back a couple of years later, moves up to middleweight, fights Michael Bisping for the middleweight belt and puts him to sleep and becomes another champion in a different weight class. He was so good, man. He was so good. This guy's run back in the day and he's still he's still like doing stuff today. He's got a grappling event coming up in December. <clears throat> yeah, GSP number two. People don't talk about him enough, man. People don't talk about him enough. Such a good, such a clean record as well. Insane title defences. If you're a champion in two weight classes, that's got to put you somewhere on the GOAT list, unless you're like Cejudo or McGregor, but... Yeah, nine title defences. No one could really stop him, or no one could beat him and get away with it. He was just so good. Number one, though, the greatest of all time, you already know who it is, it's John Jones. He is the best MMA fighter to ever live. 27-1 and as a record, but it should be 28-0, because the person that he lost to, it was a disqualification to this stupid rule. Should be 28-0, soon to be 29-0 when he faces Stipe. 13 title defences, 
13 title defences. 13. Can we just take a minute? 13 title defences. What? The mo like, most champions can't even get to a, like, a, a, a two title defences. Or three title defences. They might get to one and then they'll lose the belt. This guy's defended the belt 13 times and it's soon to be 14. He was a... Ch what's crazy is he was a champion 12 years ago. How many champions that are currently fighting were, were even in the UFC 12 years ago? I don't think any of them were. No, none of them were. And this guy, not only was he in the UFC 12 years ago, he was the champion 12 years ago. So between those 12 years, nobody's managed to come up and beat him. Not one. Nobody's managed to find the blueprint to beating John Jones. No one's managed to evolve and beat him. He's still undefeated 12 years ago. And he, like, he was the champion in two different weight classes. Ch current champion at heavyweight and dominated the light heavyweight division. Man, it's crazy how, how no one's managed to beat him in his entire career. He just dominates everybody. 13 title defences. He's been champion for so long. Obviously, he's not just been champion for 12 years, but he was champion 12 years ago. 28 and all, about to be 29 and all. Well, 28 and 1. Um, this guy... He's a beast. He's a beast. I think you all agree with this. If you disagree with any of the takes, please tell me the below. But I think we can all admit that John Jones is number one.